Hey folks, Karax here. I've been using mesh in many of my IDs. You know, mesh is not only for Jennies, right? It can be used in most of the advisors, most of the RTS. I have been asked many times how do I make my mesh fix. In this video, let me show you how. Conversion of the small piece of SS mesh follows three stages and these need some deliberate effort. One, correctly rolling the mesh piece. Two, oxidizing it. And three, quenching it. show you each steps in detail. So here was my piece. Once again 4 cm by 3 cm roughly. The first thing we will little bit of dry burn it so that if there is any machine oil and all that goes away. For which hold it between the tweezers and my trusted lighter. Nothing fancy equipment needed, no torch needed. I have a torch, but I don't use it. The lighter works just as good. The opposite side. Is it good enough? give it a slight crease at one end. A fold roughly about 1 mm like so and then crease it like so. So one end has a fold perfectly creased the other end is open. Now this is the end which is going to be the outers of the wick. This end onwards I'll start rolling it. So for rolling, I'll be using a needle to give it a start. And then I will roll it over the needle itself. So my wick will be a hollow cold one. Now you can roll your mesh in two formats. Either pipe form, that is hollow cold, or like a rod, which is tight rolled. Just ensure that it goes equally, the roll is equal from both the sides. Now you don't necessarily need to make it hollow core, but I prefer hollow core mesh wicks. Like so. Then you can continue to roll it. Remember the needle is still inside, so it has a hollow pinhole through and through, all across. Like this. It's a tube. Now remember with mesh, when you roll it one particular direction the way you started it, it gets tightened. So this is now tightened. Once you mount it inside your coil, if you feel it is uh, loose, you can always roll it the other way. Then it becomes loosened up. So after you have done rolling the wick, there are two important things to be done. I have to oxidize it and I have to quench it. I'll show you what I mean by that. Here my roll is ready. My wick is ready. A semi hollow one. So for oxidizing it you'll need some juice and your trusted lighter. So holding the wick from one end like so I'll drop some juice on it
and burn it off. And repeat the process once more. Repeat this process three times. Rotate it and once more. Now it has started soaking the juice. Previously if you had noticed the juice was lying atop. Now it is soaking in. See? This is the third and last time. Ensure that all juice is burnt on the exterior as well as interiors of the wick like so now is the third step quenching it for which I'll bring in a glass of water three times quenching it make it hot make the wick as hot as possible and dip it in the water Shake all the excess water off, wipe it off with a tissue, repeat the process again. Remember the key principle here, every step has to be done thrice. This is the third time. Three times a charm. <laughs> And dip. So that's it. Our wick is ready. Wipe it off. That's about it folks. Now it is ready to be inserted inside the coil. This was my fold. So that's how the stainless steel mesh finally becomes a wick. Now Corax, why stainless steel mesh? Why do we use mesh wick in our RTS? These were predominantly for Genesis style atomizers, right? And we already have our Japanese cotton and rayon, so why mesh? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One, cleaner taste. Well, mesh will not give you clouds. These are not for clouds. You get a modest wave, but there is a mesh here. So vapor production is okay, but the key factor is the flavor. Any RTA, any atomizer, if you build with mesh, it will taste much better. You will get the finest nuances of your juice. Each streak of flavor, you can feel it with SS mesh. Number two, with Genesis, sometimes it was difficult to set up. But with most RTS, it is pretty easy. <laughs> Take a look. I've made many videos with SS Mesh. And in these videos, you can see how easy it was to set up. The main thing is preparing the wick out of the SS mesh piece. Once you have done that right, there is absolutely no problem of uh, setting up the array with a mesh wick. Number three, length of usage. With cotton or rayon, you still have to re-wick them. Okay, recoiling can be once in a month or once in two months. But after every four tanks, three to four tanks, you have to re-wake it. Gone is that even with SS mesh. Now your re-waking frequency also goes for months. All you have to do is dry burn it and the coil and wick is again ready as fresh. Fourth is it is nearly foolproof. See with cotton or rayon you still need to have the dimensions right. You need to know how much cotton to go inside your coil. 
or you get dry hits or uh, flooding. Wet mesh is just a matter of inserting it rightly into the coil, cutting the edges and that's about it. And fifth and final, no danger of burning your wick. Cotton or rayon, if it is dry burnt, it can catch fire, right? That worry is taken off with SS mesh. So even if you forget to fill your tank, if it is a steel tank, you may get a dry hit, but nothing is adverse happening to your setup. The wick and coil will still be pristine. So these are the five major things, major factors, why we prefer mesh over cotton or rayon. But the most important factor is the flavor. There is nothing to beat the flavor which you get from your mesh setup. So I hope friends you liked it. Folks who have been asking me, now you know how to build it. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Remember, vaping is a healthier alternative and we have the right to make that choice.